Number one, topic to get through at the moment, we've got this courtesy of the Independent. Vaccine passports against my DNA admits minister, but confirms nightclub plan to go ahead. Um, proof of jabs for venue entry goes against her. everything I believe in, says Nadim Zahawi. So as you guys are aware, in the UK, or you should be aware, I think I mentioned it a couple of times on the pod, um, the UK is looking to introduce a vaccine passport for all kind of basically nightlife um, venues and whatnot um, at the beginning of October. So the idea or the premise is the only way we're going to keep the industry open is to kind of, in a weird way, coerce people to make sure they get double jabbed so that they can go to these places because at the moment um vaccine adhesion is not where it needs to be for the young people going to these kind of venues and they want to obviously stop an outbreak or whatever spike and going out the spike in cases sorry and obviously that might eventually lead to deaths and it's been interesting that for the most part the compliance has been quite high i've seen i've not really seen a lot of people pushing back on the use of vaccine passports there, obviously there is a small contingency that are obviously naturally going to be against something like this but for the most part most of the debate that i saw the protest was mainly around the idea of closing these venues and not allowing them to open under any circumstances which obviously was happening prior to us reopening or prior to nightlife or the hospitality industry reopening you know sometime at the end of last year people are really getting annoyed at that regard right so thinking oh if we can go to a supermarket why can't I go to a nightclub it's both the same kind of levels of risk and reward obviously it could be argued but that definitely was something that was definitely put out there and now going forward it looks like the vaccine passports is going to be implemented because there was talk about it you know is it going to happen is it not going to happen but considering the cases and considering where we're at and how tentative it is and obviously with it being flu season they don't want to risk anything happening and you know, if to be completely honest, if I'm completely, completely honest, from the time that I've been, how do you say it? From the time that I've been out, for the most part, especially with the lateral flow test, they're decent, don't get me wrong. But like I've said, mentioned before, I'm not really sure I'm doing them correctly. Um, I don't really have the best gag reflex in the world, shock horror. And whenever I try to swab myself, especially with a little thing at the back of the, the back of the tonsils, in, I always kind of stop after a couple. And I don't, I'm not really sure if I even touch it because, I mean, again, my gag reflex is horrible. And then whenever I try to do it up my nose because I've got hay fever sometimes, I'm full of bogey or whatever, do you know what I mean? So I don't know if it's actually, you know, getting up there or if it's just full of bogey. I don't really know. But whenever I've kind of put it in a solution and I've gone to go get myself tested, it's always come out negative. It's not come out inconclusive or anything. So that's been the problem. I'm not really sure if, this, if these PCR tests are actually legit legit if you're actually getting a negative result but it's the best thing that we have available but it's also interesting to see that a lot of these club nights i think recently i saw crossbreed saying it the other day where they're like oh even when the vaccine passports come in you're they're going to still require patients to have a pcr test so they, they're doing the extra layer on top just to make sure that that you know nothing goes wrong which i can understand as well because if you're a part of the nightlife industry or in hospitality industry or whatever the last thing that you want is to go back to a life where you are not able to work, right? It's just not something, it's not a reality that anybody wants. I mentioned prior, the parties recently have been amazing in London. It's been so good. Everyone's been such a good mood. People have been getting maybe a little bit too wasted, but for the most part, people are absolutely loving being outside again. And I don't think people that work in the industry could ever picture a reality where they have to not do that anymore. So if you want to keep it going or keep the party going, you would obviously ask the people that attend your parties to be like, hey, I know this is annoying, but if you, even if you've got a vaccine passport, I'm still going to want you to do a PCR test, which again, is probably going to test some people's patients, but in all, you know, the, the, what you call it, the compromise, you know, the, the bargaining here isn't that much really to has to, to kind of argue over really, is it? Either you do the PCR test and try and keep the numbers to a sensible level, or you don't, the numbers spike and then the government do what they always do and blame nightlife industry and then close us down first before anybody else. No one wants that. Anyway, go back to the article. So the following, vaccines minister has defended the government's plan to bring in the COVID passports for nightclubs and other venues this month, but admitted that pained, it pained him to introduce something which goes against everything he believes in. Nadim Zahawi confirmed the nightclubs and large scale venues in England would be forced to require proof of two vaccination jabs as a condition of entry by the end of September, but conceded that his own reservations, okay, by the end of September, it's not even the beginning of October, so you have to, so again, it, it's really difficult for people that don't have the vaccine because you're going to have to get double jabbed relatively quickly to ensure that you're able to, I don't know, go out for Halloween or go out for like New Year's Eve or something, you know, which are usually some bigger, two of the biggest kind of like uh, partying times in London or in the UK in general. It goes on, it says ministers um, suggested MPs would get a vote in the policy which backbenchers described as authoritarian, difficult for the hospitality industry to implement at such short notice. Yeah, that's the thing that I'm really going to be interested in. For the clubs as well, 
one thing at the moment every club i've been to they've got their protocols of how they um ad, you know admit people into the club where they kind of you know make sure i think most places based most places i've been to they just make sure you have the text or you yeah, basically they make sure you have you've had you've been pcr tested and you've got the confirmation test 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 text text or email before you even approach to show your ticket so that, that way, if you don't have it, they can quickly kind of tell you to keep it moving and then everyone else can get their ticket and carry on. Do you know what I mean? So that everyone's got a process, but would at a pub, what are you going to do at a pub? Are you going to ask people to show their PCR test or their negative, sorry, their vaccine passports when they order the beer, when they step into your venue, outside of your venue? Like, what, what, how's it going to adhere? Would that be? Would that mean they have to hire an extra staff member? Is that going to be a security staff to, to secure your for more money? It's just a weird place to be at the moment. So it continues, it says, um, it just it says a quote here, it says, it pains me to have to have to stand at this dispatch box and have to implement something that goes against the DNA of this minister and his prime minister, but we're living through a difficult time, says Mr. Zahawi, insisting the government did not um, want to curtail people's freedoms. He added that it was difficult for me to do it. It goes against everything I believe in, but it's the right thing to do. Despite his own reservation, Mr. Zahawi claimed the policy would needed to prevent large venues from acting as a host for super spreader spikes in the COVID infections. I hate all these fucking things things that started you know, i'm not gonna touch it um conservative mp william warg um accused the minister of talking rubbish and starting a needless fight with mps over the certification plan accusing him of defending the indefensible mr w mr rugg said the following i don't believe he believes a word of what he's just uttered because i remember him persuasively start, start stating my position that this measure would be discriminatory which it obviously is that's again it's discriminatory it's all for terror it's it's all for authoritarian authoritarian how, how, how do you say that word authoritarian jesus my english is going mad at the ways i mean it's like something at 1984 we know but unfortunately we are living in unprecedented times and this just seems like the only time in you know in history where we're gonna somehow have to put aside our morals and our principles and our ideals in order for a greater future because i don't really see any other way how you can keep clubs open without having some sort of vaccination possible or even just a pcr test it's just not going to be likely do you know what i mean like the ideal thing would be like you know clubs before you enter would administer a pcr test to everybody that walks through the door that way you'd have a better idea of if people are negative or positive because again people can get vaccinations and still get vaccines the lateral flow tests are not the most accurate representation of somebody's negative or positive but PCR tests are obviously the best of the bad bunch. But then again, imagine trying to set up a flipping PCR test booth outside of a nightclub. Good luck. I, most people, you probably wouldn't even be able to fit that brush, that little thing up their nose in the first place because it'd be so blocked, full of all the gunk that they've been ingesting over the last couple of months. So I don't know, man. It's a, it's a mad place to be in. And then, of course, we've got a following article here that kind of touches on the chaos it's going to bring. It says, COVID passport plan is chaotic, and nightclubs say. And nightclubs say the government's plan to only let people in with vaccine passports to venues is chaotic and surreal. The government said that people with COVID statuses will be a condition of entry in clubs and for some indoor venues by the end of the month. The industry figures um, say that there's still a lot of unanswered questions and little information about how clubs are supposed to enforce the rules. The government says it will be a provide more detail soon. Michael Keel is from the Nighttime Industry Association's it says it's almost surreal that ministers expect venues to be ready for the changes when they still don't have answers for many questions it's not clear for example exactly which venues will be affected the government says it's nightclubs and other places or large venues okay they still haven't they still haven't specified if it's going to be nightclubs and pubs or just nightclubs in general or concert halls i get what they're saying here it continues at the moment people can get an nhs and covid app by having two jabs proving they're immune for the virus or showing a recent negative covid test festivals gigs and other large events have been using qr code scanners to check people's covid passports sports um before electing them in the events i'm sure there's a black market for that stuff too i just imagine it um both clubs say that they need to send scanners and train door staff is this going to work for them are you true you're gonna have to either they're gonna have to be sent scanners or have to buy them off the black market i love this person's outfit man looks banging um continues Aaron Mella from Tokyo Industries says that it's, he had no indication from the government about what the process of checking passports would involve. Michael Kill said staffing and technology and everything to get the to put in place. So it's a real concern that they're leaving this to the last minute, as they always do. Um, it's just so little, so late for something which is quite considerable impact on our sector. Way too little, too late in terms of information and communication. There is so much work to do in terms of defining who and what needs to be done. The list is endless. So for me, it's surreal that we're sat here and um, the second week of September we're still guessing the government argues that the NHS COVID app will ensure the economy can stay open which is relatively true to be honest it's just a shame that we having to get to this point in it it really is just a shame and again um so far from the nightlife scene I've not seen a lot of pushback from it I've seen a lot of people 
probably be quite down for it. The most pushback I saw was when I went on the um, the Berlin Cup Commission Instagram page. There's a lot of people getting a bit pissy about the fact that you needed to have a COVID, um, a negative COVID, well, a COVID passport in order to go to a nightclub and dance indoors. But everyone else, it seems like, seems to agree or seems to be okay with this sort of compromise in order to go out. And again, the parties have been so good last weekend, even myself, and I'm quite a principled moral kind of guy and I was very much against the passports but even I had to kind of acquiesce and say like you know what if this is one bit of privacy or one bit of data points I have to give up in order to allow myself to do the one thing that I legitimately enjoy doing especially when you're adult age I say it's a lot it's really hard to find new friends and it's also doubly hard to find hobbies when you're an adult especially when you're above the age of like 25 because you don't just randomly bump into people or do things that are fun you sometimes get into you get you kind of you kind of grow into who you actually are you kind of get into a bit of a rut sometimes i mean you get caught in you get caught kind of being a little bit um resting on your laurels if that makes sense right when you're a bit older whereas when you're younger you can kind of fall into social groups and fun things just by the mere fact of just being out and about so when you're a bit older and you're above the age of 25 having the ability to go to a party which might eventually lead to you maybe meeting some cool new people is something that is so amazing and so exhilarating and literally gives you a reason to live or a reason to kind of keep trudging on and you're flipping dead end job in a week it really doesn't bear even imagining not having the ability to do that so if someone tells you hey you have to get double jabbed and you have to have this NHS app on your phone and have a little PTR test that takes you like, you know, 30 minutes, if that, to complete at home. Like, you're going to you're gonna, you're gonna take it. You're going to take it, especially if you spent the most part of 18 months at home alone doing nothing. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't really see a, 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 I don't really see a, a, an adequate argument against that sort of stuff, in my opinion. But hey, maybe I'm wrong.